All right, guys, before we get into the episode, we got to talk to you about our brand new ice fishing gear drop at OUBetcha.com. Guys, we have it all. Everything to keep you warm on your ice fishing adventures this winter. www.oubetcha.com. I'm wearing the You Betcha Ice Augers. Uh, hey, if you're drilling too close, get the fuck away from me. Basically what it says on the back. So make sure before you hop into the episode, you check out www.oubetcha.com and swipe up yourself some ice fishing gear. What is up, guys? And what? No oh my. Uh does that count? Are we in? Also, thanks for putting that at the front of the last episode, Mitch. I loved that. I thought that was great. Your little YouTube intro. <laughs> no, that's me. That is that is the real me off camera. <laughs> and I I am myself on camera, but obviously I need to I need to play a part, right? Yeah, you gotta play a personalize it up. Correct. And I, I do the best to show my true self as much as possible. And that was a little snippet into my true self. <laughs> We're not using this as the intro. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. And that didn't even make it in. So I couldn't even cover my tracks. Yeah, it did. It did? Yeah. That was the first 15 seconds is you and me arguing. Oh, maybe I should have listened. I, I think I only listened, listened to 10 seconds and of then, the podcast. You yeah. And then I entered. I was like, it off. Yeah. welcome back to the Double Bogey Show presented by DraftKings. You're like, we're not using this. Well, yeah, I listened to that intro and I'm like, I'm out of here. I don't know. I, <laughs> hey, is surprised that it got the downloads that it did because of that intro. Right it there. hooked people right away. Yeah, true. What is up, guys? And welcome back to episode 69. 68. 68. We're so close. They piped that the wrong way. I'll call the clubhouse. We'll book another 18 for tomorrow. Okay, they cheated on that. They fluffed their balls. Yeah, no better time for the breakfast ball than now. <laughs> We actually, what are we going to do for 69? Do we have any plans? Of the double bogey show presented by DraftKings. Uh, it would be sweet. We're not going to wear pants the whole episode. No one will have any idea if we followed through on that or not, but none of us are wearing pants for episode 69. Well, you know, it would be sweet as if we could film 69 at the Waste Management Open, but that's a little too far out. That's yes. about a month out right now. Month, yeah, second weekend in February. Yeah. Well, and why, yes. are, why are we even talking about Waste Management Open? Oh, we're going. We somehow swindled our way in. And by swindling our way in, I mean went on Ticketmaster and bought <laughs> tickets. four tickets. <laughs> Paid plus a ton for fees, all plus that. Plus an yeah. Airbnb. Yeah, it was like $689 in fees. Yeah, it's the Ticketmaster fees tickets. are ridiculous. <laughs> well, no wonder why they're such a big company. We yeah. got to get a ticket sponsorship so we can get no fees. I know. I know. Uh, would they even give it to their sponsors? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> or we need to see... Uh, I don't know. We need to see how fuck. Last time we were at the Ryder Cup, there was there was two spots you could be in. One was outside the ropes and the other was inside the ropes. And it is so much sweeter to be inside the ropes. Mm -hmm. We saw people in there. A lot of them was like family and uh wives and kids and whatnot. Um but I think we I think we deserve to be inside the ropes. I think we would bring I think we would bring some great energy to whoever we were following. Yeah. <laughs> What are the rules? I bet you it's pretty strict rules. I would love, I would love to be able to like mingle and, and chat and be kind of like normal golf guys out there, but I don't think they would let us. Maybe when, the waste he, management, maybe they would. Here's the thing also. We've never actually talked to a professional golfer. It's it's common. Mm -hmm. It's going to happen eventually. We just need to get on the train of somebody. We did it with Burned. He, he, uh, What's the word I'm trying to think? Cold of? shoulder. He ignored, Cold shoulder us. Us. He ignored he, us. He did smirk at us once. So he did like, smirk I at think us. that's the peak of our burned. But like we were the only people cheering for him at the Ryder Cup. Yeah, literally the entire Ryder Cup. We were the only ones there for burned. Yeah. And, and the fact that he can't even send us a DM back. Did he even open it? I doubt it. And it's not like he has that many people direct messaging him. I, I mean, except for Austrians. Austrians and us and whoever that's it just like friends from home who are just yeah. like hey saw you golfing today that's hey really great cool. round buddy yeah sorry let's, you play, let's play sometime sorry you missed the cut <laughs> who uh who's like uh oh i i know who exactly the perfect person for who's our the top 50 guy that we can that we can like jump on the train will zalatoris he's big too he's too big i don't he think got so. second at the masters he's too big before yeah that. and i think that's it that's his peak i think he's our guy he is our guy. I think Will Zalatoris it fits us perfectly. I mean, it fits me perfectly. Like you know who my favorite golfer of all time is, and yeah. for him to caddy for him, for Happy Gilmore is it unbelievable. That's true. I thought you were going a weird route. I thought I was like he didn't caddy for Bryson. No, no, Bryson's not my favorite golfer. I just like him. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
but yeah, Happy Gilmore's caddy. That would be that would be an electric interview that we could do. Even if we well, okay. So you you uh, you walk right past Will Zalatoris. What do you say to him? Fuck, dude. I don't know. Um, well, he's not gonna like that. So think of something. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hit the weight room. Okay, well, that's not going to get him on the podcast. Hey, maybe it might. Maybe you think, oh, these guys are funny. They're fun. They're fun. They're not afraid to sling it a little bit. Matt, from a from a, I, I believe you're a great comedian. Not great comedian because you've never done <laughs> stand up. But thank you. Uh, you are funny. Um, what would you say to him to break the ice? Do you even know who Will Zalatoris is? He's not the guy who looks like me, right? He kind of looks. No, like that's he, Ian Poulter. That's Ian he Poulter. might be at the Waste Management Open. Actually, that would be a great bit. Ian Poulter and Matt walk by each other, and I'm like. They do the Spider-Man like, meme. They're all Ian, point. Ian, is that you? He's talking to you, Matt. Yeah. And then he's like, "Wait, what?" Yeah, we go up to <laughs> we go up to Ian for autographs, but we go up to Matt instead and just say, "I'm your son." Hey, Mr. Poulter, do you think we could get an autograph? And then he'd be like, "Oh, sure." And then you give us an autograph. That was instead. a spot-on impression. Yeah. So <laughs> that's exactly what he sounds like. <laughs> Matt, what would you say to him? Um, I don't think I'd go with the weight room route just because of the fact. When has anyone ever come up to you and say, oh, hit the weight room and like that been funny? Yeah, you're right. That, I don't know. Yeah, I panicked. Never, I got put on the that spot. Never. Works never. Um, probably make some sort of Bill joke. I always like calling people who are Will, Bill, and vice versa. Uh, Billy Z. Yeah, I think I'd call him Billy Z or Billy something like Zane. that. Billy God. But here's the thing. Maybe he hates being called Bill. We it's a know. risk. We'll it is a big time risk. So this could backfire big time on us. Why didn't you call him William instead? I could, go, I could go William. I could go he, Willie. But what if his full name's not William? What, what if, if he's if, a Wilfred? It could be. Or a Willis. What if he's Wilbur? <laughs> Fuck. I Wil- think I'll go with Wilbur as a guess and then go from there. Hey, I'm, Wilbur. <laughs> I'm in for it. I'm down for like making merchandise and like all of us wearing the same shit at the Waste Management Open. Like Will's only like dedicated cheering section. What do we know about this guy? Like second at the Masters last year. Really young. He was a rookie last year. Got second at the Masters. I'm look him up. Second at the Masters. Pull him up on Google. And then he won some open right after that. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, he did. And then he won rookie PGA rookie of the year. There's no way this guy likes being called Bill. <laughs> <laughs> but look at him on the golf course. He looks like a he kind of looks like like a frat boy there. Yeah. I don't think he is. No, now look at now look up uh Happy Gilmore's caddy. Uh Tyler, how old do you think Will Zelatoris is? I think he's like twenty three. He's 25. Mm. Good try, though. Yeah. Uh, fuck, that's young. <laughs> that's this guy. Three, that's three years <laughs> yep. younger than me. <laughs> yeah, that's him. He looks like one what of the... What a career. And he looks the like thing. one of the elves from the Santa Claus movies. He does. When that came out, when that meme came out of like the, the side-by-side of Happy Gilmore's Caddy, which can you look his name up as well? Yeah. And Will Zalatoris, I thought it was the same guy. <laughs> I literally thought that he was in that movie. And now, you know the the, the like the miracle story of just like... This kid played like kind of like Jake Paul, right? Mm-hmm. He was on the fucking Disney Channel like twelve years old, and now he's like one of the best boxers of all time. Okay, that was a joke. Okay, <laughs> see, that was a good. Maybe I, I, yeah, I, check I, I gotta, you're the comedian here, yeah. Ryan. Jared, Jared Van Snellenberg. Jared Van Snellenberg. That is a mixture of like the most basic name with Jared, and then Van Snellenberg, the most super villain name ever. <laughs> yeah, that is quite the combo. Okay, interesting. Um, I'm on board for it. I'm on board for making some merch. I mean, I what what do I do for a living? So that's what I do for a living. I can literally make us and we've been talking about how professional golfers need merchandise, which we did get a direct message. Can't remember who it's from, but I'm sure he he's probably this. Yep. Um they do have merchandise for golfers. Like jerseys. Like jerseys. Yeah. Yeah. Which is long time coming. Yeah. So Will's out Taurus. He he comes up on number one T box first day. And he sees us in his merchandise while well, custom made by us. He's like, who the fuck are these guys? And then we come back the next day. And then we come back the next day. And then on, on Championship Sunday, he's like, these guys are fucking sweet. I never... want to check, make sure he's playing in it first. Yes, Matt, can you check <laughs> yeah, that I got also? Um, I'm in for it. I think he fits us. Because he's not too, he, he's big. But not too big. Yeah. He, like, That's what he, she said. People. Yeah. <laughs> oh my God. Perfect size. Uh, <laughs> I've heard that many times. Anyway. Um, so, okay. Sorry, Tyler. People know his name, but he's not unattainable. Yes. I think he has over a million followers. That's going to be tough. Yeah, that's fine. We're creeping up on that, though. I have. It looks like he's in. So, is it called the Waste Management Open or the Phoenix Open? I don't know. It says know. Phoenix Open at TPC Scottsdale. That, <laughs> wait, that's the weekend before, February 4th to 7th, right? That's, that's 2021, that is, Matt. That is. That's 2021. 
Uh, go 2022 Waste Management Open Field. Okay. Uh, also, be kind of cool to go back to our home course, TPC Scottsdale. That's true. And see what the fuck is going on there. Yeah, the last time we were there, we didn't get to finish. Well, maybe we'll get to see the rest of the course in the daylight. <laughs> we didn't even get to see the sweetest holes. I know. And that pisses me off. And I did go to the simulator the other day. And <sighs> Tyler. Did you play Scottsdale? I got three of my oh three, yeah you three out of this. the three out of the what fourteen of my new clubs mm -hmm. driver three hybrid mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and putter my the buddy three most important clubs for the simulator I'll tell you how many I shanked I probably shanked two or three the whole round with my old irons so th those are dead doesn't dead, count they're dead to me still so it doesn't count all that counts is my tee shots my two hundred and forty yards and out and then my putts because those are my new clubs. Um, you know why you got those clubs, right? Why? They were listening last episode when we were about, we were holding them hostage. No, they've had them for like two weeks. Yeah, I don't know. I just haven't had a chance to go pick them up, but I did go pick those up. And what day is it today? Tuesday? Yeah. Fuck, my new irons might be in today. <sighs> check. No, not yet. I'll call after. I'll, I'll um, play elevator music or something while you check. So, no. Oh, you have to call? I have to call him, yeah. Oh. So, I get to the simulator. My buddy who I'm playing with happened to pick my clubs up because he was in the area. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, I'm wearing my TPC Scottsdale hat. And I'm like, yeah, we should play it. Like, I've played that course before. We should, we should play it. <laughs> and it's funny because if you played a course before and then you played on the simulator, nothing looks the same. I was going to ask if like you recognize any holes. No, absolutely not. Huh. And so, also, I probably just, that was uh, our second round of the day. And I was probably like 59 beers. Deep. I was going to say, you were a little tuned up. So I don't, I actually don't even remember any of that course, even though I think I won that round. No, I lost by one to Miles. Yeah, I think that round, I remember most of the, the first three holes. I remember the first one is a long par four going along the road we drove in on. Okay. Uh, and then hole two was right next to some like little tiny amusement park. You yep. remember that? And they were at, like, they were sound checking a band. That, that was, was only hole two. That was hole two or three. Okay. I remember that, yeah. And that was when we turned back towards the west or whatever it was. Yep. Um, so those are the ones I remember the most. And then I remember Matt's um, par that wasn't a par. Yep, I remember that one too. Uh, I recognized, the, you know where uh, the water hole with the laser going around it? Yep. To keep away like the geese or whatever? I do remember that hole in the simulator, but everything else is just foreign to me. So my buddy rolls up and he knows I've been struggling lately. Uh, gets me my new clubs. I unwrapped them. Uh, I should have done like an unwrap, uh, like an unwrapping, unboxing, <laughs> unboxing thing, vid. But it's our yeah, you can't do it without the full set. No, they're fucking sweet. Uh, and obviously, the first shot, you're gonna get that ball mark, and you're absolutely gonna know where you hit it. <laughs> and it just my first shot with the driver was not in the correct spot, <laughs> but it still went 280. That's nice. And I'm like, holy shit, these are custom fitted to me. Um, so he. We roll up. We we start playing TPC Scottsdale, and he thinks he's just gonna wax me. Tyler, my drives three hundred to three fifteen mm -hmm. straight down the dick. My three hybrid two forty straight down the dick. What are you gonna do with that Rest sixty yard club. gap? What if it's two forty? Uh, I have a three. I have a three wood. I, that's that's coming. Yeah, it's okay. on the way. Uh, straight down the dick. My putter. I shit you not through 150 eight, through 18 <laughs> through 18 holes. I'm I made like put it in the hole on the simulator, which is borderline impossible. Five putts <laughs> between 15 and 22 feet. Nice. Get this man on a course ASAP. He, He's ready. Are you itching? I, I think I'll have all of them by the time we go. to. I the sure open. fucking hope so. We're going to hold that place hostage. I'm so I could not be more jacked right now for those three clubs. The other ones, I should just play with those three clubs, play a full round, just master them. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you got to get to know your new clubs, and um, I wonder holy if that's shit, a, a that technique that good. anyone uses when they get new clubs. They just play like an entire round with one club in their putter. Well, that's what the guy who did the Dan plan did. The what? The who? You guys have never heard of the Dan plan? No, no? really. So this guy, he wanted to test the theory that in 10,000 10, hours, you could master something. So he quit his job and just tried to become a professional golfer. And at first, he would play only with like a putter, like for the first like year. And then like only with like the niner and just like worked his way up. So to, he would for a whole with, year? He would tee off with a putter? Mm -hmm. Not with the putter. I think he just putted on the, he's done like a whole year just putting okay. on the greens. Okay. Yeah. And then just like, yeah, he just learned by club by club, worked his way up. He had to stop, I think, six years in because of an injury. 
but he got pretty close to 10,000 hours. Yeah, he had made But did it. he become a pro- professional? No, he played in some local tournaments, but I think he had a <laughs> he had a back injury. Yeah, so, so you Ryan don't, played in local tournaments that, too. That just shows that you don't need to put 10,000 hours in to to be a tournament golfer like me. You can just sign true. up for a tournament. <laughs> you yeah. can just sign up for the tournament. And then, I don't know what his uh, actual... I'll see where like, he ended up. But. Because I played in a tournament, that granted me new new clubs. And I'll tell you what, if it wasn't for that tournament, I probably wouldn't have gotten new clubs. Yeah, I so, believe that. There are good things that came out of the Pine to Palm. The bad thing is I got banned. <laughs> the two good things is I'll be back under, uh, with, under Matt's name. With fresh clubs and Matt's alias. And the second reason... That came out. The second good reason is I got new clubs. So I like that. Uh, I also went to the oh, simulator same day as you. Sorry. Before, uh, let me finish the simulator story. He thought he was going to come in and wax me. Mm-hmm. Beat him by seven strokes. Shot a 70. Uh, uh, shot a 76. So where is the tally now then on your guys' rolling bet? Do you count? Does the simulator go into it or is that somewhere? Yeah, the only? simulator usually goes into it, but we stopped betting when I started to mm. get the shanks because it just wasn't, it wasn't fair. Yeah. Um, You'd be broke. You wouldn't have been able to buy the new car- clubs. No. So I'd have been up another 70 bucks. Yeah. Uh, but the running tallies, I think I'm, I'm up $21. Cash and I don't out. know where that $1 on top of <laughs> retire came from. <laughs> Cash uh, out with that. Put it in, put it in pull tabs. Well, for, we'll have this running balance for the next 10 years. Yeah, At and then least. when you're done with that, whenever you, I want whenever you guys decide to cash out, put all of your winnings into pull tabs. Well, I think once like once the tally hits a thousand bucks, then someone's got to pay out. Oh, I'd hope so. I'd I'd try to cash out at a hundred. I think I'll I think I'll get up to a thousand this summer. Do you think? Yeah. You think you're gonna? Because I can get into his head easy. You just I, spent the last whew. year in your head. No, I know, but then I got, <laughs> yeah. but then I got new, but then I got new clubs. So that's now I'm true. Out of my that's head. true. Yeah. Well, then he's gonna get new clubs and go up a thousand on you. No, he just got them last year. Well, he'll get new ones anyway. <laughs> no, nope. So I think thousand dollars is the limit. Anyway, okay. uh, ended up just absolutely destroying that course, um, uh, because you know home course, I knew it so well. Um, so yeah, it was a good day at the simulator. Uh, what is your simulator story? Post quarantine, welcome back, by the way. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that was the first thing I did. Post quarantine, um, I had a tea time at the simulator at eight thirty in the morning. You went at like eight at night or something. Mm-hmm. Um, golf, fine. Golf aside, um, I wish you didn't sell your driver on the yeah. podcast because the your old driver that I currently have that we swapped the hybrid for driver, um, lots and lots of shit rattling inside there. Oof! It sounds like uh, it, you know when you have a baseball bat and it starts. You yep. used it for way too long, and you can hear shit rattling around in there. Yep. This thing sounds like a maraca. Yeah, I shipped the driver out yesterday. Otherwise, I might have refunded. And- At, it's okay. Someone else can use it, but I'm back on the market for a new driver because um, I okay, let the so driver. If, I, if anyone on the podcast is looking to sell their driver, reach out. Let us know because Tyler's looking to buy one. Yeah, this isn't just a a seller's podcast. We're also a buyer's podcast. But make sure if when someone says I have one available, make sure you still ask them, "Is this available?" <laughs> Several times. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right. And before. then never respond. And then don't respond to them and just go to the next guy. Okay. Okay. I'm in. So if you don't hear from us, if if Tyler asks if it's still available and you don't hear from us, there's good reason. Yeah, not interested. That's how online deals go. Um, but yeah, so I let the driver eat and I never let the driver eat. You know that. Um, hit it pretty damn well. Uh, I think it's because uh, you wear like different. I don't know if the height was different or something because I always top the fuck out of the driver. Okay. No matter how high I tee it up when we're playing real golf. But I was just wearing regular shoes um, on that super flat turf. I was hitting the driver super well. There was one time I hit one 305 and it was straight as hell. A lot of them were left and right, but they were going a long ass ways. Good. So I don't know if that's the simulator pumping my tires or if I was actually hitting driver well for the first time in forever. Good. Um, But yeah, then I broke the driver. So I'm back on the bar. So you broke it? I don't know. I was just hitting it too hard. So now there's there's a bunch of shit broken off inside of it. Well, I think that just shows that uh, if you just show up to the course, you don't need fancy shoes. You don't don't need fancy clubs. I am speaking for myself here. I don't need all that shit, but you can just show up and still play a decent round. What did you shoot? 90s? Uh, yeah, I was like 96 or something. Sure. It's yeah. Because the driver was off, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's fine for me. We played, we played Beth Page Black. Yeah. Where they're doing the Ryder Cup when it comes back to the States. Winter's course. And then we played the, I don't know if this is just this brand of simulators, but there's one called the Infamous 18. And it's basically like is one, it a golf? Is it like a golf addiction, like stock course? I have no clue. Gotta be. I think it's whatever brand of simulator they have. Okay. Stock course. Yep. Okay. Yeah. That's what I mean. 
And then it just reminded me of like all of those ridiculous courses that people build on PGA 2K21. Like the first one is you, there's a giant waterfall in the back and there's no fairway whatsoever. You just have to hit this island green out in the middle of a waterfall. Yeah. And um, hit the green on the first try. Everyone That's else correct. stroked out. So um, I absolutely ran the tables on the infamous 18. You know what would be really cool? is if you could build a course on PGA 2K18 and then license that to indoor simulators. Yeah, like transfer the data to a simulator. Yeah. There's no way we're too far Damn, off from that. that would be sweet. I think you got to be able to design a course I, for I'm sure it. the rich people <laughs> could do it. Yeah. Someone the fat out, cats of the world. Someone out there has to be able to figure out a way to create a course on PGA 2K21 and license that out to a simulator so you can literally go there and play your own course that you created. How fucking sick would that be? And then when we get Matt's, we we take Matt's VR golf that we all we all collectively made VR golf perfect. Yeah. And then we golf it like that. So you're literally seeing the course you built with your own eyes. That, or what you could do is you could literally just upload your course from 2K21 onto a like a U like a like a jump drive. Mm-hmm. You could plug it in to the computer at at the simulator. So only you can play your course. So only you can play the course. And it's kind of like a SoundCloud rapper. Yeah. You, you get take a, your course, you put it on 87 jump drives, and then just start passing it out to different simulators. If they like it, if enough people play that course, then it gets put into the rotation of yeah, like, hey, this is a course you can play. You give them a sample or whatever. You give them yeah. like, here's there's 50 rounds uploaded on this. If you want, you can buy this course when you're done with your 50 rounds if people like it. Hey, yo, I'm dropping a new course pre-save. Yeah. <laughs> link, link, link in the bio. <laughs> link in fucking bio, baby. Here's what you do. You go to the, like, uh, you go to simulator heavy cities or like golf heavy cities, mm-hmm. which I don't know what that would be. Uh, what's, Matt, Matt, what's the most like? Scottsdale or in Phoenix. Okay, Scottsdale. Let's yeah. just go with that. You go to Scottsdale. You just start walking downtown and you look for guys in like a, uh, like a, a Quater or a Mizzen in Maine. Or like a uh, like a Nike polo, guys walking downtown with their wives, maybe wearing like a dad hat, uh, and not cargo shorts, just regular khaki shorts. And you start handing that jump drive out to those guys because you know they're golfers. Mm-hmm. Well, or I you think- go to the course and you literally sit at T box number one until you get kicked off. Uh, you and start le- handing jump drives. Out. You just you pay for a round, and then every time on the like the first or second tee or whatever, where they got that dish of tees and ball markers and yep. cards and pencils, you just put your own dish there filled with jump drives. Jump drives, that's sweet. Actually, I don't think Scottsdale's the biggest simulator would be the biggest simulator city because you can play all year round. True, but I think a lot of them don't do well in the summer heat, so I okay. think they play golf more in the fall and spring. Interesting. Maybe I can see like the Northeast being a big simulator population as well and it's then you literally you, you could become a guy who just blows up and making custom courses for golf simulators young golf course designer like the you betcha country club on pga 2k 21 that's yeah. a sick course it's got some work to do that was, oh, that was yeah. his first one he ever made um, well it's just like you know you're not going to make it on soundcloud immediately with your first song that's true oh uh, yeah we could just be like outside golf tournaments like uh dudes with their mixtape like, just handing a take it please fucking take it yeah yeah, or you sell them for five bucks or do something like that. Yeah. How do we how do we get that going? I, I mean, fuck, we're full of ideas on this podcast. Uh we've we've made somebody money at some point. Somebody's had to run with one of our ideas and make some money at some point. Well, right? someone who whoever's gonna create swinger is yes. gonna make some money. Speaking it's not of us. Speaking but. of swinger, um quick do, update. Quick, quick update. We uh, are Silicon Valley is the worst. They're tough to work with. I I never want to go back to Silicon Valley. Uh, Silicon Valley. Uh, Silicon. Silicon Valley to do business again. Yeah, well, we still we're we're in the middle of business. We got we're stuck with them for a hot second. Well, I I showed up and I I literally showed up in what I, like basically what I'm wearing now, like the Midwest drip, mm-hmm. right? The vest, the hoodie underneath. Yeah, and everyone was on fucking hoverboards and nap pods and shit. Yeah, and wearing like wearing suits <laughs> and shit like that. Maybe that's the place to pass jump drives out. Maybe, um, but. It was tough. So we left there and we're like, fuck, should we actually do this or not? Uh, so we're like, well, normally what we would do is we would just take it into our own hands. Mm-hmm. So we got a couple calls this week with a couple app developers. Uh, it sounds like there's people already making it, which props to you. Yeah, just don't take our name. Uh, yeah, and if they, uh, I don't know. I got, the, I have the domain. I have the TikTok, Instagram handles. So 
whether you take the name or not, I already got it. Yeah. It's not going to be nearly as cool as at SWNGR Golf. Right. TikTok, Instagram. Go sh- uh, 200 some followers already. Hey, yo. Haven't even posted Not yet. a single post. Not even a profile picture, right? No. And that's, <laughs> I, I know there's people out there that want it, and, and we do as well. Uh, but on top of our current jobs, it's going to be a lot of work. Uh, but we're going to do our due diligence. We are going to field some calls from some app developers, which I know what they're going to say. They're going to they're going to say they can build it for us, and then they uh, we're going to have to pay a monthly maintenance fee, and we're going to have to run it. And we just we, we don't have a lot of time. We don't want to do that. So uh, we're going to feel that out. But we're also going to feel out the fact that like if you if someone has already done this before, which it sounds like there's a couple different versions. We're going to send out some feelers to them to see if we can have some creative control because the original idea on the podcast a couple of weeks ago seemed to just hit different. Yes. If you will. So like the ones that are out there right now are not quite what we were talking about. Like the grand scheme of things, it is to connect golfers to golfers on these other apps that we, we have seen out there. Uh, but none of them have the swipe function or the usability that like a Tinder or a Bumble has. Well, and here's the thing, Tyler. It can it can literally turn into like uh like golfers meeting golfers for like to go out on a date or something like that. It doesn't right. even need to be like, I just need someone to play with today. It could be like if you're big into golf and you want to find a girl or a guy who's big into golf, you hit the app, you find uh someone who you can connect with, mm-hmm. who you can uh, hit some bombs with, who you can hit on the Bev cart girl with, and uh, it could just be love from there. Yeah, maybe we just it turns into a dating app. What if it just turned into? What if it just turned into a dating app for swingers? For I mean, I mean, we we'll probably stop promoting at that point. But and we don't even know if that name's gonna stick. We don't even know if this thing's gonna happen. Uh, but we are going to see it out. Hey, yeah, for the first time ever, we're going to have an idea that we're actually going to try to follow through with. <laughs> and it was completely off the top of the dome Yep. when we first came up with it. And then uh, you guys just literally forced us to do it. Seriously, can you guys like relax? Forced us. You can't just have million dollar app ideas and just expect them to be built overnight. Yeah, it's like we're being held at gunpoint by our followers to make this app happen. It's like, can you let us breathe for a second? I had COVID. <laughs> but now the new thing is like, uh, if we can get into creating custom golf courses for simulators. Yeah, so maybe Ooh. we're on to the next thing now. Because there's a lot of stock courses on simulators that suck. They're terrible. Like we played uh, uh, Red Rock Canyon or something like that. Sounds like a sweet name, right? Mm-hmm. Because when you're when you're going to choose a course, you, you go for the sweetest name. Unless mm-hmm. you know what the course already is, like it's TPC. Um, and it was the worst cor- course on planet Earth. There's one that's on the moon. Yeah, worst you ever course play the moon course? No, worst course. Drives go like 450 yards on accident. You sneeze in that ball. See you later. Yeah, and that's just not fun. Uh, so we went like, let's get a mountain course, like like in the mountains. Mm-hmm. Uh, I don't know. That's another another idea. We'll see what we'll see what happens with that. <laughs> we have so many ideas. We got to just get an app developer in house. We I was need to say we just need to hire a software engineer at this point. Yep. Yeah. Um, okay, Tyler. Well, that's a quick update on Swinger. Let's take a quick break. We'll come back. Um, I have a little game I want to play with you. Okay. Because I saw a stat yesterday that I was blown away by. So we'll expand on that a little bit and uh, then we'll close out the podcast. All right, guys. We are back and so are the NFL playoffs. They are here on the DraftKings Sportsbook app, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. And things are kicking off with a huge offer. Counting down to Super Bowl 56, new customers can get 56 to 1 odds on any playoff game to win their game, on any playoff team, sorry. Uh, bet just $5 and win 280 in free bets because it's 56 to 1. Mm-hmm. 5 times 56, 280. Free bets if that team is victorious. I love that offer right there. Um, that gets... Uh, Put it all in the Titans. That, yeah. I, Over that the Bengals? I'm taking it. That makes me feel good. Uh, that's I'll leave it at that. Uh, all right, guys. Again, just five dollars on any playoff NFL playoff game, and DraftKings Sportsbook will give new customers an additional two hundred and eighty in free bets. And remember, huge cash prizes on the DraftKings Daily Fantasy if you do not uh, live in a state with the DraftKings Sportsbook. So you have an option regardless of where you're at. When we go to the Waste Management Open, uh, we'll be on the sports we'll be in Arizona. Book, baby. We'll be on the sports bookie. Uh, hopefully be able to pay for that trip in... Um, It'll be Super Bowl weekend, so we'll be able to play some big bets. Oh, shit. Also, my Grizzlies might be playing. Fuck. It might be. It is Super Bowl weekend that weekend? Yeah. 
either we got to get back ASAP Sunday or we got to stay there. We're not getting back till Monday. Oh, why? Because so, that's flights. Then we can't choose when flights leave. Fuck, that sucks. <laughs> Um, okay, we'll figure something out. So, guys, go to uh, DraftKings Sportsbook, download the app, and use promo code BETCHA, B-E-T-C-H-A, and win 56 to 1 odds on any NFL team. You bet just $5, you win 280 in free bets. Can't get much better than that. Uh, again, promo code BETCHA, B-E-T-C-H-A. Get in on some NFL playoff action and uh, see if you can win yourself some extra money. I know I'm going to do that, uh, especially when we're down in uh, in uh, sunny Arizona. Yes, it's going to be a grand old time. It will be. I'm excited for it. Especially, We're going to make some money. We're going to make our trip money back. Make some money, lose some money. Regardless of what happens, it makes the game a lot more interesting. I'm telling you, you could watch the most boring game on planet Earth, but if you have even 10 bucks on it, mm -hmm. it makes it that much more special. Uh, so again, guys, DraftKings Sportsbook app or the DraftKings Daily Fantasy, promo code BETCHA, B-E-T-C-H-A. Get those 56 to 1 odds and uh, pay for another case of beer or a trip to Arizona. Must be twenty one or super or Super Bowl tickets. Yeah, that'd be unreal. It would be sweet. Um, and remember, you must be twenty one years or older. New Jersey, Indiana, or Pennsylvania only. New customers only. Minimum five dollar deposit and one other wager required. One per customer. Restrictions apply. See DraftKings dot com slash sportsbook for details. And if you have a gambling problem, call one eight hundred Gambler. Oof. You know what? I'm going to be sneaking onto the plane, Ryan, when we head to to Arizona. Your child. Um, not my child, um, but something that's almost as near and dear to me as my child, some bulk beef jerky. Ooh, um, you think that'll get taken at TSA? I don't Probably know. I I'm going to individually pack it in some small baggies. Yeah, some uh, Ziplocs. So then they can't get mad at me for having one big giant bulk bag. Yeah. I'm going to take the five pound bulk bag. and Will then you be overweight capacity? No, nah, I won't tell them. Oh, okay. They're not going to weigh, weigh it, I don't oh, think. Okay. Well, it's, we'll sneak right through with it. Um, so we're going to have a giant five pound bulk bag of jerky in individual tiny little bags because nice. I can't not go an entire flight without snacking. I don't know about you. Little four ounce bags. And I'm sick of eating airplane pretzels. So I'm going to bring the bulk beef jerky. I'm going to snack on some moist, tender beef brisket jerky on the way there. I might even sneak on some of uh, the rip and tear for you two guys. I don't know, Matt. I don't know what you like. But I like it all. Ryan likes the rip and tear. So I'll bring some of that for him. And then maybe I'll bring some uh, dog jerky in case we run into like a friendly pup or one of those coyotes down well, in Arizona again. Yeah, that might be a good idea. I know that in the Minneapolis airport, someone just stands in the middle of like uh, the walkway with a golden retriever and said just like free pets. Really? Like as in like stroking his head. Actually? Or is it a drug dog? <laughs> no, it's actually just there for you to go up and pet it. It's the nicest dog on planet Earth. All right. Well, maybe I'll bring him a treat. Yeah. I'll bring him a treat. Maybe some dried fruits and nuts. Uh, but make sure you order. We got to order it before we go to Phoenix. So it's going to deliver straight to your door. If you go to bulkbeefjerky.com slash you betcha, Y-O-U-B-E-T-C-H-A, use promo code you betcha. They'll deliver it to your door for 10% off your order. So you don't have to go hungry on your plane ride and you don't have to eat shitty airplane pretzels. Go check the deal out, bulkbeefjerky.com. Uh, real quick, before we get into the segment, are we flying direct or through direct. Minneapolis? Damn it. Sorry, we won't get to see the golden retriever. No, I was gonna say we hit this. We get a simulator time Ooh. at uh, MSP. Even if we only have like a fifteen minute layover, we'll get one hole in. Maybe we should just drive to Minneapolis, play the simulator, and then fly from there. We could. There's also a simulator here. There's also probably one a real course down in Arizona. We can play. yeah. Let's just get there as fast as possible. Okay, sounds good. Um, all right, Tyler. Okay, Ryan. I have a little segment for you. Uh, Matt's on the Google. He's going to pull up some photos uh, because that's what this is based around. I need you to I need you to see face to face who these people really are. Okay. Um, and I saw this stat yesterday. Of, uh, I can't even tell you the stat because it's going to give it's going to give this away. Okay. So I want to go through ten different golfers. Okay. Professional golfers, professionals, amateurs, whatever it may be, plethora of both, and I want you to guess their age. Oh, okay. okay. Because when I saw this stat, I was like, holy shit, they're how old? <laughs> like, are they peaking now? Are they peaking when they're 40? Are they peaking in high school? When did you peak, by the way? Haven't yet. Really? Yep. You Even though you won the snow prince nine years ago uh, today? Yeah, or? 10 years ago today, I was crowned snowball prince. Um, so round of applause, I think, is Jesus. warranted here. Did you get a trophy or anything? Uh, I got a crown. Did they let you keep it? Uh, yes. And then the next year I got to MC because I was a junior. So then the prince from the junior year gets to be the MC, the senior year, because it would be unfair if I won prince and king back to back years, you know? Jesus. 
Someone get this guy a yearbook. Yeah. Uh, Someone it's close wide, it for him. Wide open. Do you still have the crown? I have no idea. It's probably in a box somewhere. You should find that and wear it on the pod one time. Uh, yeah. Next, um, We'll do it next year when it's the anniversary of me emceeing. Okay. <laughs> Ten year? Yeah, it'll be 10 years for the MC anniversary next year. Yeah, 10-year ten, ten reunion from graduation. Shit, we're getting close to that. That'll be next That'll be next year. Yeah, yeah. mine was last summer. Oh, damn. We're man, old. Man, TikTok. Did I, man, did I miss my high school friends. <laughs> was, was it, it was good to be back. <laughs> I don't know. It was fine. <laughs> uh, I, ha, I like I have my good buddies now, and that's yeah. That's how I am, same. too. I have, like, the same circle that I still, like, see. Yeah. S- still connected with, like, three or four. Yep. Yeah. Yep, yep exactly. Um, all right, Tyler. So, 10 golfers. I need you to guess their age. Matt's on the Google, ready to go. First one up is our boy, Mr. Chug Me a Beer at the Ryder Cup, Justin Thomas. Just by looking at him, you want me to guess his age? Correct. Uh, He's 29. He is not 29. He is 28. I was close. That was really close. (sighs) And what really blows my mind is he's the same age as me. (laughs) <laughs> yeah he's way cooler too and that sucks can you look up yearly uh like 2021 winnings justin thomas yeah uh just just uh, you can just extend that google <laughs> we gotta get a f- matt we, we need gotta, well, we gotta, google images oh uh, just 44 no. million dollars so he has 44 million dollars more than i have damn you don't have any money no <laughs> you're at zero Eight i guess the new, clu- the new clubs probably well no it's zero. my trip to silicon valley and each hotel cost me thirty six grand a night. <laughs> That's so rough. I was there for two nights. That drained the bank account. And then this they they tried to get me to pay them like 150 grand just to sign an NDA. I think you need to really cash in that twenty one bucks then. Yeah. I need to get I need to just scrounge. Even uh high high school bit. Hey, remember when uh, I bought you Taco Bell at lunch senior year? This was like back in December. You think you could like shoot me that seven fifty back? You need to start hitting up all the people that owe you Venmos. I know. I know. Or just request like 10 bucks from everybody I have in Venmo. Just see see if they pay. Yeah, see if they pay. Well, how many people listen to this podcast? What if everyone just sends you a dollar? That'd be Uh, like $6 million. I'd have like six bucks. There you go. So that covers the Taco Bell, almost. That'll maybe get you an Uber to the airport fare. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> maybe. Yeah. If you walk close enough. Yeah, exactly. If you meet them halfway. That's why I got to get down there with that DraftKings, uh, DraftKings Sportsbook deal. Yeah, we just going to make money gambling. Um, all right, Tyler. Justin Thomas is 28, so you're 0 for 1. Um, okay. Masters, 2020 Masters winner. 2021 Masters winner. Mm-hmm. Hideki Matsuyama. Uh, I need to see him. I need to see him. I think he's he's probably a similar age to Justin, right? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go 29 again. That's right. Hell yeah! How'd you know that? Because he's been in the he's been playing for about the same time as Justin Thomas, so I knew it was close. You? How do you know how long he's been playing for? Because I follow golf. <laughs> he does have a golf podcast. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Uh, one for two. Next one, Dustin Johnson. Ooh, Dustin's older. Um. 34. Wrong. 37. Oh, he's grandpa. A, he's towards the end of his his prime. He got knocked out of number one in the world. Yep. Uh, however, regardless of whatever happens to him, he's married to Paulina Gretzky. He's a winner for so life. That, it literally is golf career. Doesn't mean anything from here on. Out. Also, great movie you to pull up that picture. The picture of him and Paulina, not just him. It was yeah. just right there. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, like it's the you, first image that comes up. Actually. Google Dustin <laughs> Johnson and she's in it. So that just shows you how, like, her likeness is probably way more than his. Probably. Okay, so you're one for three. Mm-hmm. Uh, Bryson DeChambeau. This should be an easy one. Uh, 25. Nope, 28. Really? Isn't it crazy how these guys look either so much older or so much younger than they actually are? Damn. All right, man. He's, he, he's peaking now, right? Again, same age as me. I can't fucking believe that. Should we see, should we see his earnings? Yeah, j- check his earnings. I JT bet. I was, bet it's less than Justin's, don't you think? <laughs> That's by year. That can't be right. In twenty twenty one, he earned five million. Okay. Regardless, it's over a million, which is a shit ton of money. Yeah. 2021, 2022, he's earned $113,000. Okay, well. And last year, he won 7.4 mil. Jesus. Five the year before that, three before that. Yeah, so Justin's crushing him. Big time. Yeah. Endorsements. Gotta Mm -hmm. be. 
Um, okay, next one. You got that one wrong, so you're one for four. Patrick Cantlay. FedEx Cup winner. I feel like Patrick is younger than he looks. He looks old. I'm going to say he's 26. <laughs> really? Yeah. 29. Hmm. That's a, that's like the the normal age right now. It seems to be like the twenty eight and twenty nine yeah. area. Yeah, like anywhere our, our age range is the one that's dominating golf right yeah. now. Yeah, I mean, understandably so. so. I mean, we're we're at the peak of our games. Oh, <laughs> uh, that depresses me. <laughs> well, let me get those new clubs in, and you just watch. Yeah, right, right. I got. I have one year until like I can hit the prime of golf. I have one year to make make a run make, at it, make some noise. Absolutely. Uh, okay, John Rom. That's not R H A M. R A H M. Gotcha. Rom looks old. It's a bad picture of him. He's thirty. He's twenty-seven. What the fuck? I am older than John Rom. I'm the same age. How that is I? He looks. Is, does it? Am I? Do I look old? Am I? Do I look you older? Look, you look older than you are. I think. I'm still shocked that we're the same age. Do I look the same age as this man? No. No, you look younger than him. No. He, John, was, he was growing that beard at 12 years old. He's aging like a terrible bottle of wine. <laughs> Maybe like it, it's got to be the beard. It's got to be the beard because Matt and I both don't have facial hair, so I feel like it makes us look younger. Yeah, it could be. 27, married, got a kid. John looks like he's seen some shit. Probably. He's a, he does. He's a, he's a Spaniard. <laughs> he looked like him and his yeah. friends, like one night they like killed someone on accident. They just Jesus don't talk about Christ. it. It's, it's something like that. Like he looks like he got a secret. There's Matt. <laughs> hey, There's Matt, Matt for everybody. John Rom, um, just so you know, two of the three of us on this podcast don't think you killed someone on accident. I just think maybe, maybe you've seen a murder. Maybe That's what I'm saying. He's shit. got a secret. Okay, next one. You got that one wrong. You are one, four, six. Happy Gilmore. Uh, in the movie in or the movie. now? Uh, Happy Gilmore in the movie. Like, are you saying Adam Sandler's age or canonically how old was Happy Gilmore in the movie? Happy Gilmore in the movie. Happy Gilmore in the movie was 24. 28. What the fuck? I know. That's what I'm saying. How old was Adam Sandler in the movie? 28. It, it mm. didn't say how old he was in the actual movie. Yeah, I don't think it was important to the plot. No, it definitely wasn't. Uh, also, if you were wondering, this is the greatest golf movie of all time. It is the greatest movie of all time. Uh, I mean, greatest golf movie, I'll give that to What do you think the greatest movie of all time is? Uh, I don't think there can be one. Why? Because there will always be one. It's subjective. It's just into the really mind is. of each person. It really is. But what's your top? I would say the most one of the most beloved movies across all genres, and I think there's not a single person that dislikes it, which could probably put it in the conversation is Forrest Gump. I don't think there's a person in the world Not that bad. dislikes Forrest Gump. Not bad. It's a good choice. Have you even seen it? <laughs> I have seen it. Yes. Okay. Matt's seen seven no, movies you in his haven't. life. I've seen clips on TV. We're gonna watch. A, we're gonna <laughs> no. watch a movie together sometime, Matt. We can do it on Super Bowl Sunday in Arizona. Okay. Deal. Hey, instead of watching the Super Bowl, we'll watch Forrest Gump. <laughs> All right. Next one. You're one for seven. Rory McIlroy. Rory's older. Um, he's going to be similar age to DJ. Rory is 36. 32. What the fuck? <laughs> so, so he was like number one then when he was like 26, 27. Yeah. Well, same with John Rahm. He's 27. He's, he was number one in the world for a while. Yeah. He was number one when he had to been like 24 then. Yeah. Damn. Insane. Uh, okay. One for eight. J.R. Smith. Because <laughs> he's now a golfer. He is a golfer now. That is correct. JR's old. He's. But remember, he went into the league right into the, from high school. So he started the NBA really young. So that means he retired young. Younger. Prob 34. 36. Okay. I, was, I, I mean, I've been kind of close on most close. of them. I almost accidentally gave you this one away because it says college golf at 35 and the headline <laughs> right there. Yeah, I didn't read the headline. When I first look in, looked into this, I could not believe that. Justin Thomas, Bry Bryson Cantlay, Rom, they were all like well under 30. Yeah, I believe JT is. I, I wouldn't. Yeah, but I didn't think he was 29. Yeah, it's I, I'm still mind blown by this whole thing. Okay, one for nine. Last one. Okay. Mr. Puma. Ricky Fowler. Mr. Fowler. Uh, he was at the height of his fame when we were, or at least when I was like a senior in high school. 
So he had to have been probably 22-ish then. I'm going to say he's 30. 33. Holy fuck, Ricky, you're old. I know. And these guys, like, the dominating age in sport is 20, like, I would say 20 on average, 26 to 30. And I think golf, you get more of a shelf life than other sports. Yeah, because, like, the the smaller tournaments, like the Sony Open, like, uh, uh, Stuart Sink, is that his name? I don't know. He was he was playing. He's I think he's like 48, 47. Jesus. Again, I don't know. I can't fucking read. Well, how these guys. old is Phil? Phil's oldest ball. Phil's 50. Yeah. Can and, you believe that? And he's a PGA champ. Yeah. Unbelievable. This There's is the only, time. only sport in the world where you can compete as literally one of the best on the planet at an old age. Uh so number two in the world are, I believe right now. I don't even have this one written down, but Colin Murakawa. He's like 22. 24. Damn. 24 or 25. Well, then Will Zalatoris has got to be yeah. like 22 ish. He's 25. Really? Yep. I just looked. So it he up. was just, he just must have gone like all four years in college. And yeah. You know what we got to do? We need to find a guy on the Corn Ferry Tour to we, just get behind. We literally need to go all in on Corn Ferry Tour. Uh, where do we watch this? I don't know. <laughs> Uh, like uh, Sunday Reddit at Reddit like, or something. I uh, just want everyone to know that it only took one year in the Corn Ferry Tour for my PGA character to move to the PGA. Nice. I think so, I was at like half a year. Yeah. I, think I made it like one tournament and then I was in. I don't think that's how it works. Oh, okay. Um, <laughs> I think you got to play okay. an entire season. Anyway. Uh, okay. So five. So you were one for 10. Yeah. I think guessing should, age is hard. It is. I think I should get some half points for being like a year off on some. Okay. Then you were maybe like two and a half for 10. Yeah. I'll take that. Um, five of these guys in the list, the ones that are under 30 are, have the top five most wins for guys under 30. Jesus. Who's number one? JT? Um, yes. And then it's like Jordan Spieth. Mm. Yes. So Spieth was the only one not on the list that's in the top five. Yeah. I, him and Justin Thomas, I feel like are the same exact person. Right. I get them mixed up. All the time. Yeah, I think they got to be best friends. Especially they might at, even have to be brothers. At the Ryder Cup, I could I could not tell who I was looking at. No. For, cause especially because from a distance, I was like, yeah, yeah. that's Spieth or JT. I don't know. Yeah, we we're outside the ropes. We couldn't see anything. Yeah. We got to get inside. We'll get inside. inside. We'll ropes. be right up next to them. Yeah. Um, what happens if like I cough in their backswing or something? Just don't do that. I mean, I won't on purpose. How would you, co- how, how would you go about covering that up? I would run away. You know how like when you try and hold the sneeze in, <laughs> you just like <laughs> finger up in the nose, but you like, like close your mouth, close your eyes. And it just like everything explodes out of every other hole in your head, <laughs> your ears. Yeah. Your ears, your uh, fucking eyeballs. If I was at, if we we're at the waste management open and we were inside the ropes around the tee box and someone was about to tee off and I felt a sneeze or a cough coming, I would just run away. Yeah. I do not want that on my conscience. Well, there's always going to be that guy who is going to talk in someone's backswing to be funny to his buddies, mm-hmm. they're just going to get kicked out right away. So why would you Why would you even risk that? Yeah, I don't think they would kick me out for a sneeze or a cough because they understand that it's a bodily function. Yeah. But I still don't want that. I don't want that bad juju on me. I think they'd move you at least to the back or something like that. They'd yeah, they'd be like, move you to the back. like, all right, buddy, get your allergies under control. If you could have one job that's not a golfer at a professional caddy. golf tournament. Easy. Nope, not a golfer or a caddy. What would it be? Um, I would be the guy that tells the crowd to be quiet. Did you read my mind? Oh, that's just a sweet job. You know, it's like so much power. But here's the thing. You about, tell thousands of people to shut the fuck up and they listen. Here's the thing about that job is you don't get to see anyone hit the ball because you are facing the crowd. Mm, I might, I might, uh, maybe hold like a little mirror, like a rear view mirror in my hand so I can like, maybe uh, there's a mirror on back of the quiet sign. Maybe. So then the golfers yeah. can go can analyze their swing as they're swinging. Or I would be the line judge, make sure that they're not teeing up in front of the markers. I think I would want to be a ball hawk. Like watch where the ball lands? Yeah, point the ball out. That'd be kind of cool. I think the worst job would be a rules official. Yeah, you got to sit in the tent and wait to be called. Yeah, when you get assholes like who, uh, you know, they're like right next to, they're like eight feet away from a stump, but they need to take their practice swings on that side so it gets in the way and prohibits them from hitting their ball. I'm going to mend Weird my, shit like that. I want, if this is waste management open, I want to be the manager of the bar, the the Bev cart or the bar 
in the in the grandstand because the manager doesn't have to be slinging drinks. His employee does. So I yeah, get to sit just... in the bar and watch the best hole in the entire tournament the whole time. That would be sick. I don't know. The power thing, though, I mean, I kind of go on a power trip sometimes. Yeah. And if I could hold the sign and tell the world everyone there just to be quiet and they listen, this guy would be kind of sweet. Some of like some richer people, too. You yeah. Tell them to shut like, up. Yeah. Their net worth's way higher than mine. You're just like, shut the fuck up. And then they're like, oh, sorry, I will. I feel like they're all old people, too. Yeah. You look old. And then I can tell them to leave. Yeah. If they're to be too loud, I'm like security. I got some guy row, row three, seat four. Um, he's got a he's got a sweater over his shoulders and a big old sun hat. Looks like he's at the horse races. Kick him out of here. Yep. And then he's he's gone. Yeah. He's and then gone. as he's getting pulled out, we'll make eye contact and I'll be like, fuck you. You should see if you can apply for a job there. I how do we? Do I'm it? sure. That, I'm, I'll I, get inside the ropes. I know you can volunteer, but that's probably like set up, take down, all that type of shit. I wonder if it's not like it's got to be like city jobs, right? Because the city of Scottsdale. Well, I know that there's a tournament in Sioux Falls that you can uh, volunteer at. Should we do it? That's Matt's hometown. Could. What tournament? Do you, not, do you know anything about this tournament? Matt? I do not know. Yeah, my mom sent me the link uh, last year to volunteer for it. And it's a PGA tournament. I believe so. We could go to the one in Hazeltine in Minneapolis, too. We could do that. 3M Open. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, let's wrap this podcast up. Uh, I mean, if you're down in the Phoenix area and you get us on a decent course, uh, somewhere we can film and uh, maybe trade some merch out for, some Bev car. Whatever merch. we got to do to just be able to film and not worry about it. Yeah. Uh, if you want to help us get onto a course where we can just feel comfortable filming, that's mm -hmm. kind of the main thing right mm -hmm. now. Uh, let us know. Shoot us a message at breakfast.balls on Instagram. And uh, in the meantime, guys, we'll see you next week. Uh, big episode next week. 69. Guys, yeah. right? No pants. That's the biggest one. And then uh, we're all done. And then we're that, all done. That'll with the, be it. The finale. So yeah, this is the, the season finale. Do we got to leave them on a cliffhanger to make them come back? Uh, maybe. What if, if we don't make it the season finale? Every episode from there on out will be 69.001. Then 69.002. And then we film. Well, no, let's go 68.01. And then we'll film 69 when we're down at the waste management. Okay. We'll film it on the 16th, the we'll, 17th hole. We'll 16th do 68 hole. and a quarter, then 68 and a half, and then we'll do 69 in, in Phoenix. 68 and 5 eighths. Yep. Yep. Um, all right, guys. See you next week. Bye. Hell, that's a breakfast ball.